Well, we are on the last lesson, um, authority. So, in the in the Christian life, it, it, a resounding question. That, I mean, I, I hear this all the time. How how do I know direction in life? How is how is God going to speak to me? Okay. Um, and it's the same answer for how you detect a wrong attitude within yourself, uh, a wrong motivation in your heart, uh, a wrong action in what you've done, and wrong words in what you've spoken. It's how God speaks to us. I mean, it, 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 God speaks to us in the same way that he directs us. See, oftentimes we look for this mystical light, but the grand majority of the people in the Bible did not receive that divine light. Okay? You have, you know, just, just a few people... Uh, the other people, you know, had pretty practical means, I mean, and light. Consider the 3,000 people who were saved in Jerusalem when Peter preached. I mean, there wasn't anything necessarily light from above. They just heard people speaking. So, I mean, and there's a lot of different situations like that where um, one person will receive, you know, this direct revelation from God, and that doesn't mean that we should expect for everybody to receive some divine revelation um, in order of, of God's direction and, and, and that kind of stuff. Um, and I will say this also, sometimes we try to substitute not having a prayer life with mystical encounters. Does that make sense? Like, rather than um, seeking the Lord um, and, and communicating with Him, you know, having that, 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 that devotional life um, and then interacting with the church and that kind of stuff. We we instead try to separate ourselves from others and then you know use this mysticism to find God's God's voice. Um, and you know so I will say this sometimes we feel separate because we are separate. Um, we weren't lived, meant to live in, in, in ostracism from the, from the body as a whole. You know, like house churches or we're not going to church or that kind of stuff or even going to church but not um, really meshing with people you know you, you have to put forth an effort in relationships to actually have a relationship I mean uh, but anyways um, so how you detect these things and, and, and how the Lord most often speaks to us is first off through the Bible this is his, his written revelation the most direct way that he um, speaks to us, but then there's a secondary, and there's another source which which is called which is authority. Okay, now keep in mind that the Bible always trumps authority, but authority will speak to our um, to our attitudes, whereas the Bible will speak sometimes to our maybe to our minds. Um, and, and why I make that distinction is because sometimes when we're reading the Bible, we skip over things that, that God's trying to tell us, or are we we interpret it to make us feel better about ourselves rather than um, actually accepting uh, truth about us. Um, but with authority, they, they're oftentimes not uh, bound by that. Like, let's consider, you know, the teenage um, boy who's told something by his parents, and then, you know, he, of course, being a teenager, takes offense to it or whatever, um, when they were just trying to help him. Now, let's say, let's push this a little bit further. And that teenage boy had a relationship with God, with God. and um, you know he read his Bible everything every day and, and 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 he prays all the time. But he missed that. Whatever the parents told him, he he completely missed it. Um, because once again, if if you're only if you have no input in your life, um, you, you're not going to have uh, that reinvention process that we we're talking about um, in lesson ten. Um, also consider the pastor. Now, I definitely do not agree with the idea that pastors have, you know, final say so in every aspect of your life. I like those churches where you know you have to clear buying a house with the pastor, and you have to clear moving with the pastor, and all kinds of different stuff like that. Just I, I, I don't, I don't, I think that that's kind of an abuse of power. But at the same, at the same, um, same set, at the same point with that. Sometimes we make pastors into no more than entertainers, and if they say anything that we don't like, we instantly discredit them, rather than actually listening to what they have to say. Or once again, seeking their counsel. I mean, they are spiritual leaders. Um, um, 
and then let's consider you know our bosses at work for instance they'll they'll say something to us and we'll take offense to it or whatever and um, rather than realizing that sometimes people who don't like us see us better than we see ourselves remember that just because you see you in a certain way doesn't mean that everybody else sees you in that way okay I think I'm a really patient person yes but what does everybody else think because oftentimes we will blind ourselves to things and I will say this once again I, I mentioned this in an earlier earlier lesson what we see in others is usually in us what we see in others is usually in us now I'm not talking about um, living a life of, of, of you know, uh, being a slave to everything, you know, um, especially um, recently with this whole um, Bill Gothard stuff that's been going on um, at 2014, 2015. Um, there's a lot of people who, who, you know, get off a little bit off topic with, you know, um, with the whole authority issue. Um, obviously, there's, there's two extremes there. You, you, you shouldn't... Um, Authority shouldn't become the final word. Okay, they are still subject to to God, but at the same time, people really don't need any help with rebellion. It kind of comes naturally, and so it's what people tend to do is they go they go to the other extreme. Um, they either need an absolute authority besides God in their lives, or they need no authority in their lives. And it's like, well, there there is that once again balance. Once again, balance. Um, I'll give you a story that that Bill Gothard actually gave. Um, there's this boy who feels called to go into the ministry, so he decides to go to Bible college. His father tells him, no, 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 you shouldn't do this. Um, you should go and get a real degree. Um, and before anybody stops me there, I do have a Bible college degree. Um, it is a real degree. Um, it's a bachelor's degree, but, I mean, I did get it from a Bible college, so I'm not knocking that or anything. And the boy says, um, no, I, I, I feel like God's calling me, and I'm going to go to this Bible college. See, what's going to happen is by him rejecting his, his father's authority, um, he is going to, uh, to not develop certain character traits that could have developed. Okay? For instance, maybe the father saw that he was a little bit self-willed, which is a trait that is not going to last in ministry. That's just not going to last. Um, give it some time, and eventually you will be um, an, an out-of-work pastor. Because being a pastor is a lot about service, and just pretty much not at all about having self-will. So, I mean, with that being said, the father was trying to say something that would have helped him. Okay, And if the, if the son would have submitted to that father, what would have happened is he would have gained that character, but then also his relationship with his father would have been bettered, Okay, would have been increased. Because the father would have seen that submission, and he would have um, seen growth in his son. Remember, our authority is there for our benefit, and I'm telling you these things for your benefit. You don't have to like what I'm saying. I know a lot of times when I talk about authority, people uh, people just abuse their authority. Yeah, there are those who abuse their authority, but the thing is, you can't change everybody around you. But you can, um, you can learn from the situations, and you can um, use uh, what's at what's the reality around you to grow and learn from. Um, so, the first way that God speaks is through his word. However, sometimes we become a little bit biased and blind. Um, so, the, the second way is the authority. And the, the third way is finances. We talked about this in the finances lesson, but God is going to uh, most often remove finances and, and give finances according to what is um, what, what he wants you to do. Um, and that kind of an idea. Um, I strongly, um, I strongly discourage people to um, take out loans or buy things on credit um, unless absolutely necessary, like a house. Um, uh, peers, friend, and foe. See, what we like to do, excuse me, is we surround ourselves with people who agree with us and people who like us. Well, God will oftentimes speak through people that we don't like. He'll speak through all kinds of different people. And the thing is, when you learn to deal with those people you don't like, your ministry increases and your character grows. But what we do is we give God a funnel. Okay? God says, you know, I want you to go and go to the ends of the earth, right? And so we say, okay, but I don't like the poor. I don't like druggies. Um, I'm not a big fan of Mexicans. 
Um, I, I, I don't want to live in a desert. You know what I mean? I mean, our, 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 our cone is getting very limited. And so that means that the amount of people that we can actually witness to and minister to is very small. Well, consider the story that I told you earlier in the class. I spent a good majority of my college years in preparing to, to, to teach the intellectual. Well, <laughs> that means that everyone else who wasn't part of this um, white upper class um, progressive um, genre was not going to be witnessed to by me. They had to have previous previous knowledge of God. They had to have been in the upper class. They had to have been American. So I mean, there there was such a limited focus. Okay, such a limited focus of who I could witness to. Uh, also, prayer. Now, why prayer is so far down the list is because oftentimes people will separate themselves from having fellowship with the community of Christ. They will not read their Bible, and so they'll just start making stuff up. And um, then they'll rely on these special revelations and these and these the, these prayer times in their closets where where they're not actually having communion with them, with God, but they're having communion with their own conscience and thoughts. Um, and, and, and so um, they'll then you know go out and take these things as though God actually spoke to them when actually it was just their own um, imagination speaking to them. Uh, and, then, and then circumstances, the, the situations around us, God uses to speak to us. Um, and now why this is so low on the list is because sometimes we cause the problems we're in, sometimes we do not cause the problems we're in, but other people do. And sometimes God allows things to happen. Sometimes God causes things to happen. So there's so many different factors that, that sometimes things are just happening and we perceive them to be God trying to speak to us. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not talking about luck. I'm not talking about things just happening, okay, necessarily. Um, I'm, I'm saying that we live in a fallen world and sometimes um, bad things happen to good people in that fallen world. It's just kind of how it, how it goes. Um, So my main point here, my main point here is don't see angels behind every rock. There are some people who go super spiritual. Well, my my bike tire was was flat, and you know I feel like God was trying to say that my spirit was flat, and they have to always super spiritualize everything. Now I'm not saying that God could not speak through a flat tire. I'm not saying that. But, you know, once again, if you see things, if you're looking for signs everywhere, eventually you're going to find a sign that fits your bias. So, and then the last way is conscience. Why this is last is because our conscience becomes scarred according to what sins we allow in our lives over a long period of time. See, at first, once again, we talked about this uh, before, the three stages of sin. At first, there's, there's, this, there's this debate within ourselves. But then as we gradually start accepting it and justifying it, we reach a place where our conscience is scarred. We've done something for so long with excuse. Okay, I'm not talking about those people who struggle with something. I'm talking about you who do things and then justify it. You you do it with so, for so long with excuse that it, eventually you become deadened to it. So the reality of it happening is something that, that, that is very much so um, ingrained in you. Um, which can be, you know, revived through the Holy Spirit and that kind of stuff. Also, our conscience will only see things that um, we want to see to a certain extent. Okay, um, for instance, the, when slavery was okay, there were people who used scripture to justify that. Well, now that slavery is not okay, there's people who use scripture to justify that. Now, am I saying that scripture is relative? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that you find meaning as you just as you as you um, or create meaning as you interact with the text. What I am saying is that we twist scripture. Okay. So, um, but with that being said, authority is a main way that God speaks to us. Okay. So who is my authority in life? Well, if you're married, it's your spouse. If you are not married, it's your parents. If you don't have parents, then it would be your legal guardian, whoever was, was in that situation. If you don't have that, if you do not have parents, you didn't have a guardian of any sort, you just kind of grew up 
on your own, um, I would highly encourage you to find an authority. Okay, find someone, a pastor, uh, a, a friend who, or someone who could become your friend, who will not just tell you what you want to hear. They will tell you the hard things, and they have a biblical basis. You want you want somebody in your life who is who has a biblical basis. Now, I do want to clarify something. What makes someone a father or a mother is whether or not they had any role in your um, in your um, fertilization as an egg and in your that that's it. Okay, it they don't have to be a good person. They don't have to do all do their job right. Okay, what we do is we have a father, for instance, and we re reject him because we don't think that he did a very good job or we don't think that he has the right character, or whatever, and then we substitute someone else in their place. So what happens? is we keep a bad attitude towards our father and we start to conform to our father. Not an attitude per se, but an action. Okay, Our motives became, become similar. And no matter how much we reject that person, we just become more and more like them. Um, even though we do all the different thing, and things differently, our heart is just like them. And so then we have this bad attitude that we carry over into other aspects of our relationships. And we become blind to things. And I will tell you this. The people who reject the authority that's in their life miss opportunities and they don't even know it. They miss opportunities and they don't even know it. There are some things that I have learned by working with my dad that I never would have learned anywhere else. Okay? Not only that, but at, when when your parents are growing you up, when, when you're a teenager and you're a toddler and all that stuff, they're going to make a lot more mistakes than when they get older. Because as you kind of separate yourself, you're able to, you know, establish your own family, your own your own thing. You're able to separate yourself, you know, once again, uh, lead their mother and father and become one flesh with the wife. Um, and with that being said... Uh, they're able to see clearer, is what I'm getting at. So, um, and once again, uh, you don't you don't listen to authority because they deserve it or because they um, have earned your ear. You listen to authority because it's how God wants to speak to you, and it helps your character to grow. As annoying as it is, it helps your character to grow, and that's what we want: is to grow. We want to constantly reinvent ourselves. We want to constantly move forward. And we never want to reach a place where we're justifying our attitudes. And so how will we know if we have a problem with an authority? First off, there's usually that testimony to your spirit. Uh, or first off. Second off, um, you will have kind of a, a bitter feeling approach whenever you think about them. Third off, you'll usually have nothing good to say about them. Uh, fourth off, um, you'll usually look for people who don't like them as well. Um, these are just some just some... Simple things here. Um, but our authority figures are major ways that, um, that God speaks to us. So the three basic purposes for our authority. First off, to grow in wisdom and character. To grow in wisdom and character. Luke 2, 49-52. Now remember, Jesus is fully God. But listen to this. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. They went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all, thing, all these things in her heart, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. See how it emphasizes that human aspect of Jesus? Um, so to grow in wisdom and character, God uses our authority to change us. Oh, well, they just rubbed me the wrong way. I don't see why she's in charge. She's an idiot. Um, oh, well, I don't like my manager because do, 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 do. Well, whatever. God is trying to grow character in you. Now, um, it's at this point that somebody always interjects and says something about, well, is there any excuse to rebel? Here's the thing. People, by their nature, always find reasons to rebel. So I would highly discourage you rushing to rebellion. However, biblically speaking, there are a few, very few instances where God 
allowed or caused, whatever you want to say, a, a, a rebellion that was according to what he wanted. Um, for instance, uh, King Rehoboam, Solomon's son, God caused that rebellion because Solomon had done evil. And so Rehoboam um, lost the 12 tribes, you know, was only able to keep, I think, two. Um, so what I mean, so so once again, that there are instances where where where, where rebellion is um, is a thing. So um, here in America, what is the standard? Well, first off, keep in mind that once again, we are rebellious people, and we always are looking for things to rebel about. So let's say, for instance, um, the president does a um, cash for clunkers. This is not a reason to rebel. Okay. Um, Maybe the president makes some uh, stupid business decisions, or let me rephrase that, business decisions that you think are stupid, regardless of whether they are or not. Um, is this a reason to rebel? Well, see, no, not really. So, I mean, we have all these things as to reasons to rebel, and what it does is we give ourselves the idea of rebellion, okay? Let, let me kind of clarify what I'm saying. We say, okay, I'm not a rebellious person, but then we have a list, a mental list of, of ways that we can rebel. And so then we don't even realize it, but we have this attitude of rebellion that's creeping up in us. Oh, but I'm not rebelling, but you have that rebellious attitude. It's a very, very bad attitude that's within you, okay? Um, for instance, um, uh, I don't know how far I want to take this. Um, In the finances class, I said, don't see yourself as the victim, even if you are. Here's why I said that. Because let's say you are the victim. Everybody's picking on you. Everybody screwed you over in the course of your life. If you allow yourself to think that way and to believe that, you're going to be held back, regardless of whether it's true or not true. So you let it go and you don't allow yourself to be the victim. And you take charge and you take control with whatever cards you actually have in your hands. Okay? You can't constantly be thinking about things that you don't have. You can, you can only think about what the things that you do have and how to react in that time. In Lord of the Rings, Gandalf says to um, Frodo, Frodo says, "You know, I, I wish I'd never been born. Uh, I never I wish I never had been born in these times, or something like that." And Gandalf says, "So does everyone who's born into such situations. But it's not ours to decide. It's only ours to decide what to do with the time that is given to us." Okay, it's only ours to decide what to do with the time that is given to us. Um, and it's the exact same thing with, 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 with what I'm trying to say here. We find reasons to, to rebel because we are rebellious people. So as a general rule, if you have submission as your, as your main focus, you will have the discretion to know when to rebel. Now, with that being said, the majority of... of, of times that people have rebelled, it's not really been necessary. For instance, when Christians rebel for persecution, well, didn't Jesus say that they were going to do that? Now, obviously, in America, for instance, we should vote and that kind of stuff to, to as much as we can. But remember that, that, that in the early church, the Roman government gave them no, gave them no such um, impact. I mean, Jews were having them killed for the first, you know, century almost. Um, just something to think about. Um, okay. So God uses authority to change us. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Um, I could obviously elaborate more, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. Um, so, the second reason is to gain protection from destructive temptation. Now, the first one is to grow in wisdom and character. That's, that's to help us to become more mature. Number two, to gain protection from destructive temptation. Okay. Now, uh, with that, let's go to 1 Samuel 15. Um, 22-23. But Samuel applied to the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord. To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. 
Rebellion subjects us to Satan's realm and power. When we live a rebellious life, when we rebel, you'll notice that, that, that just more bad things will happen. You will find yourself being tempted in areas that you never would have. For instance, that boy, he goes to Bible college, and um, you know, then he tries to go into the ministry, and at the first church that he ever pastors, he is constantly battling, um, battling pride, constantly fighting with people, and because of because of the bitterness that he allowed to take root with his father, he now is is, is reeling that in all the older figures in the church and ostracizing the elderly from him. And as we all know, the elderly usually have experienced more just because they've lived longer, right? With that being said, people who could have advised him and counseled him are now removed. Now, because those people are removed from his life, okay, he's not going to have the right influence in his life when he decides to take out a car loan. And so now he has a huge car payment and his church attendance is dropping. One thing leads to another and the board puts him off. Now he's got a car payment. So, I mean, all these bad things happen because, because of that um, rejection of authority. So we obey authority to gain protection from destructive temptations. Um, you know, that's just one example. Uh, you can think of more. Um, you know, uh, sometimes God causes things to just start going wrong, like our car starts breaking down or this and that, uh, because we're not, you know, um, dealing with things with our authority. Um, maybe, maybe you're um, not listening to your husband. Uh, maybe you're not listening to your boss. You know, the different things like that. Um, and then the third reason, to receive clear direction for life decisions and to accomplish his will. Okay? To receive clear direction for, um, um, for life decisions and accomplish his will. This is how you know where to go, how you know what to do. Um, as I already mentioned with Luke 2, with, with uh, Jesus... Then also, Isaiah 45, 1. This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of, to subdue nations before him, and to strip kings of their armor. So he's talking about someone who's not even of the promise, who's going to come and, and do these things that he appointed. And he's ta talking about the way that he's going to work through this person. See, God oftentimes works through things in people rather than giving us that light from above, okay? Um, so, to receive clear direction for life decisions and accomplish his will, okay? Sometimes uh, God will want us to do something, but we won't hear what he's wanting us to do because we're, we are rebelling against our authority rather than listening to them. Um, or, you know, once again, when we rebel against authority, we have these attitudes. It's not just as simple as, I don't like that person. It becomes, I don't like that person. And then, because you don't like that person, you rebel their authority. Um, you have all these things that happen in your life. And then things that happen because of that, those things. You have bad attitudes that come up. And because you have bad attitudes, you lose certain influence in your life. Because you because you lost certain, certain influence. See what I mean? It's, 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 a, it's a progressive thing. Whenever we allow bad attitudes in our heart, we lose out. Okay, We think, oh, I'm rebelling against authority. That's going to show them. Well, first off, well, we'll talk about this later, but um, it, it hurts us. Look at all these different things that, that I listed. These are things that benefit us to grow in wisdom and character. Do you want to grow up? Do you want to mature? Do you want to be more, more spiritually advanced tomorrow than you were today? To gain protection from destructive in, in temptations. Do you want to, to, to be a well-rounded person and to grow from things, to, to, to have the, influence, the, the chance and the opportunity to be influenced by something? Do you want to be removed from, from temptations such as such as pornography and those kinds of things? Do you want to have uh, direction in your life? Do you want to know where you're going, where God's calling you to? Do you want to know which decision and course of action is best? Do, do you want do you want to accomplish the will that God has for you? These are things, three basic purposes of authority. And once again, we rebel against authority to our own despair. Okay, to our own despair. All right. Um, next lesson, we'll pick up with the basic structures of authority, um, which will help you to distinguish uh, who is your authority.